You can't use secular weapons to fight spiritual battles. Dr. Tony Evans explains why this strategy only produces frustration and disappointment. And the reason why many of us are still prisoners of war is we're still looking at the secular world to help our spiritual need. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. In any war, if your commander isn't smarter than your enemy, you've got a problem. Today, Dr. Evans explains how trusting God's leadership can keep you from becoming a spiritual prisoner of war. Let's join him. Thought too many of us gather together on Sunday for a parade rather than to find out how to go to war. And that's why we have so many casualties on the battlefield. We have casualties on the battlefield because far too often Christians are not at war, they're simply visiting the parade. You say, well, how do you really know that we're in a war? (laughs) That's easy. There are a lot of POWs out there. There are a lot of prisoners of war. People who have been caught in the crossfire of the angelic conflict. Like it or not, we have described that you're in a battle that you had nothing to do with starting, and yet you're right smack dab in the middle of it. Because it has to do with a battle that was erupted when there was a rebellion in the heavenlies, that got transferred down here to earth when Satan set up his command post from planet earth, and God came down to this command post, created a man who would usurp authority over him, the lesser overruling the greater. The battle has unfolded. Satan takes the lead. He takes the initiative. And man subjugates the world that God has given him to manage on God's behalf over to Satan. And that is why the scripture says that the whole world lies in the hands of the evil one. The world lies in the hands of the evil one because it was handed over as men joined Satan in his rebellion against God. So you and I are born into a world that is owned by the devil. But when you came to Jesus Christ, you were born into another world, uh, born again. You were born again into the family of God, the kingdom of God, and now you are fighting on the other side. Satan has an agenda. That agenda is to bring the world under his control and make Christians ineffective uh, in bringing others out of the war-torn zone to make us ineffective in leading others to victory rather than defeat. Satan operates in four spheres simultaneously and all four are obvious. Let me review them. First of all, he attacks your individual life. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Satan like a roaring lion on the prowl is seeking whom he may devour. To put it bluntly, he's after you. And no matter who you are, what your status is, He wants to overthrow you. And when you look closely at Christians today, you find many Christians who are in the POW camps of hell. He has overthrown them in the area of drugs, and they are held hostage. He's overthrown them in the area of alcohol, and they are held hostage. He's overthrown them in the area of discouragement and depression, and they are prisoners of war. He's overthrown them in this area or that area, and you can call it what you like. There are many names for it, but in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual conflict realm, they become prisoners of war. The second sphere that Satan attempts to bring hostage the people of God is in their families. We saw it when Satan tempted Eve, Eve tempted Adam, and the family came under the authority of hell. We saw it when the sons of God had relationships with the daughters of men, producing a whole rebellious generation against God in Genesis chapter 6. Why is the family so important to Satan? I'll tell you why. Because the battle would be waged by the seed. It would be waged by the offspring. And so Satan wants to destroy your family not only because he wants you, but because he wants the next generation. 
And if he can get the next generation before you have a chance to mold them, shape them, steer them, direct them, guide them, help them, if he can get them because of a messed up home, he not only now has your home, he has their home. And so it becomes a generational problem. Why? Because the battle is being waged by the seeds. And the tragedy is that Christians today are still fighting flesh and blood rather than principalities and powers and world forces that are devastating it. And so that's why we've got to fight for the family because whoever controls the family controls the future. And that's why we've got to fight against men walking off from their families because they're getting too tired or it is too hard. That's why we've got to fight, fight against women who are in, so in love with the workplace that they neglect the seed that is the next generation. There is a battle on, and he wants to get your family. So he attacks individually. He attacks to your family. The third entity that he attacks is the church. He attacks the church through promoting disunity, division, discrimination, racism, classism, culturalism. He wants to split the family of God up because Satan understands something that many Christians don't, and that is God does not work in a context of disunity. There must be harmony in order to see the power of God. So if he can split people up on racial, cultural, or class lines, if he can get people making their first decisions based on their personal heritage rather than based on divine viewpoint and the war, as you've heard me say before, when you're in a war, you don't care about the color, class, or culture of the man fighting next to you as long as he's shooting in the same direction you are. And we are in a war, and that means people who are different than us, if they're pointing their guns with us at the same enemy of us, then we better learn to get along because we're in a common battle against the common enemy. And one of the reasons that our communities are in disarray is that churches have been kept from coming together and making a distinction, a very important distinction, between membership and fellowship. It's a very important distinction. We have a doctrinal formula here that we believe. To become a member of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, you have to be willing to come under that doctrinal formula. That distinguishes us from another church or another group of Christians somewhere else may distinguish our membership, but it should never distinguish our fellowship. Because fellowship means if you belong to Jesus Christ, even though we don't dot all of our I's uh, together and cross all of our T's alike, we're still spelling the same name, Jesus Christ. And if we're still spelling the same name, if he is the standard, even though we may have idiosyncratic differences between various vicissitudes of the faith, it is incumbent upon us to recognize that our fellowship is in Christ while our membership may be distinct. And so maintaining fellowship without compromising membership becomes a very important purpose of the church. And that is why God says in Ephesians 4 to preserve the unity of the church. We must fight to be one of the church. Fourth area is society. Satan is behind the princes of nations. He's behind the kings of nations. He sits behind them, provoking them, empowering them, enabling them to destroy whole nations and groups of people. And when you understand that this is his plan, when you understand he wants you as an individual, then he wants your family, then he wants the church that's supposed to be the light to the world, and then he wants the society to run it down, you understand that we're in a spiritual battle. And it's more than who you elect and which congressman is uh, representing you in the state or in the national legislative body of Congress or in the state legislature, which senator. It has to do with the spiritual issue of Satan and God. And until you can trace back your personal POW status, your family POW status, your church's POW status, or your society's POW status back to the spiritual conflict, Satan got you because he's got you wrestling against flesh and blood and not against principalities, powers, world forces that are located where? Heavenly places. Many of you here today are still reeling from the spiritual warfare you grew up under as a child. Many of you are here are reeling today because you've been made a prisoner of war of self-esteem. 
because your parents were being used of the evil one to beat you down and to let you know you were nothing, are nothing, never going to be anything. You became trapped in that prisoner of war status and now you think like a prisoner of war because you've been living in that cell so long. But you can break out and Dr. Evans will come back to explain how in just a moment. Sometimes we don't even know we're being held captive. But as we've been learning, our physical problems have spiritual roots. Learn how to dig them out with the help of Tony's teaching collection called Spiritual Warfare, one of the most popular series we've ever offered. And right now, for a limited time, we're making Volume 1 of this powerful set of lessons available as our gift to anyone who can help support Tony's ministry here on the air with a contribution of any size. Without your help, we wouldn't be able to continue bringing you our program each day. So we want to take advantage of this opportunity to express our appreciation. Visit us at TonyEvans.org or call us at 1-800-800-3222 before this special offer runs out. Make a contribution of any size, and we'll respond by sending you Volume 1 of the CD series, Spiritual Warfare. Again, all the details are waiting for you online at TonyEvans.org or call us at 1-800-800-3222. And let one of our staff members help you. That's 1-800-800-3222. And now here's Dr. Evans with more of today's lesson. Like it or not, we have described that you're in a battle that you had nothing to do with starting, and yet you're right smack dab in the middle of it. Because it has to do with a battle that was erupted when there was a rebellion in the heavenlies that got transferred down here to earth when Satan set up his command post from planet earth And God came down to this command post, created a man who would usurp authority over him, the lesser overruling the greater. The battle has unfolded. Satan takes the lead. He takes the initiative. And man subjugates the world that God has given him to manage on God's behalf over to Satan. And that is why the scripture says that the whole world lies in the hands of the evil one. The world lies in the hands of the evil one because it was handed over as men joined Satan in his rebellion against God. So you and I are born into a world that is owned by the devil. But when you came to Jesus Christ, you were born into another world, uh, born again. What is the source of this battle? And this is what I want to get to today, so follow me close. No matter whether it's individual, family, church, or society, what is the source, what is the mechanism Satan is using to get in there? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Some of your versions say strongholds. We are destroying, now what are we destroying? Watch this. Speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God and we are taking every thought captive to obedience to Christ. The first thing he wants you to know is you can't use secular weapons to fight spiritual battles. And the reason why many of us are still prisoners of war is we're still looking at the secular world to help our spiritual needs. If your problem is caused by the devil, your flesh can't win. Paul says that our methods are not fleshly because our enemy is not fleshly, which means many of us have wasted time, energy, and resources seeking flesh-based help rather than spirit-based help. When you wrestle with something day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out, believe me, that's a battle no matter what other name you give to it. You're fighting, and if God speaks to it, it is a spiritual battle, and if you never thought that it was being satanically imposed, now, not everything is satanically imposed. Some things can be physiological, can come because of problems in the body. But I'm talking about things that are, have spiritual root causes, needs a spiritual cure, not a band-aid. You don't find out you have cancer and take milk of magnesia. The crisis of the problem demands another kind of help. Now follow this. 
The source of your spiritual battles find their root in your mind. Until you fix your head, you will never solve the problem with your feet. That drug problem you have, <laughs> until you fix your head, you won't solve the problem with popping that needle or that pill. It starts in the mind. You say, how do you know? Because it has to do, chapter 10 says, with speculations, verse 5. The knowledge of God, verse 5. And taking every thought captive. Now, where do speculations come from? The mind. Where is knowledge rooted in? The mind. Where do thoughts come from? The mind. It is all in the mind. So, in order for you to get released from your POW status, being trapped by hell, when you've been born again by heaven, is to learn to think differently. Satan has so constructed our thinking that we adopt his thinking about the world rather than God's thinking about the world and notice what he sets up in our mind. He sets up in our mind, according to in the verse 4, fortresses. Or, as some versions translate it, strongholds. He sets up in our mind permanent residency. He sets up walls that won't come down. He makes himself so at home with the vice grip of our thinking that we conclude there is no way I can say get out of this problem, no way we can save this marriage, no way we can unify this church, no way we can make a difference in our world. Whenever you hear Christians talking about no way, no how, never can be done, tried everything I can try, it just doesn't work, you're looking at somebody who's got a stronghold or a fortress. However it got there, it was built there through the means of the evil one, but it has been situated in the mind. Now, if it is situated in speculations, knowledge, and thought, all having to do with the mind, there is no place you can go that can take you to a solution that does not address that. Everything else becomes a band-aid or a temporary solution because it deals with the mind. Now, the stronghold or fortress then is a mindset that holds you hostage. If I were to describe this whole stronghold or this fortress, here's what it is. It is a mindset that holds you hostage. It holds you hostage in a way that you believe that you are hopelessly locked up into a situation that you are powerless to change. That's a fortress. It is a mental way of thinking that holds you locked up into a situation that you feel you are powerless to change. And that's when you hear Christians saying, I can't get out of this. I can't stop this. We can't make this marriage work. I can't. I can't. I can't. Whenever you say you can't, when God says you can, the only reason you believe that you can't is Satan has made himself at home in your head. So you have to understand that you are functioning from a stronghold of the brain. Speculation, thoughts, and knowledge. Now, when you were not saved, you had on the hard drive of your brain, to use computer language, a godless way of thinking. Vanity, emptiness is what the Bible calls it. Vain, vainness, Ephesians 4 says. An empty way of thinking where Satan punched the keys and through the various experiences of life put on the screen of your life his way of thinking and he put it there so strong that it became part of the hard drive. It was permanently recorded data that caused you to operate the way you operate. When you came to Jesus Christ, he gave you a new floppy. He gave you a new disc that was now to be put now on the drive that was now to determine new data of information that was now to move on the screen of your life that was now to control the actions by which you live. Many of us now have 
have a new floppy in the drive but still living by the old data on the hard drive. We're still operating by that old way of thinking rather than by the new disk that Jesus Christ has given us so that even though we're on our way to heaven, we're still being owned by hell. That's why Paul has to write this. He has to write this because of these believers were trapped in a way of godless thinking that left God out. Now, how is Satan able to pull this off? It tells you. Verse 5 says, and we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing. That's key phrase. What's a lofty thing? A lofty thing is a petition. We have a couple of classrooms in our building, and if we want to divide them, we have a petition that we pull. And that petition that we pull will take that large classroom and split it up. And the reason we split it up is because we want one thing happening on this side of the room, another thing happening on that side of the room that we don't want to mix. Because we don't want these two things to mix, we go in the classroom and we pull a lofty thing. The reason it's called a lofty thing is because the petitions that are being referred to here were pulled up. So they would be lofted up. We pull ours out, but the same concept is to divide the room. If Satan can put a petition in your mind, to divide the secular and the sacred. That which is of God and not of God. That which, if he can get you coming in here, hearing about God on Sunday, but lifting the petition as you walk out of the church so that that data is not transferred to Monday, you come in with the problem you had, you leave with the problem you had, and all you had in between was a nice song and a nice sermon because he pulled the petition and blocked the knowledge of God. Dr. Tony Evans, encouraging us to push beyond the barriers the enemy puts in front of us. And stay with us because he'll come back in a moment to explain how we can break down the biggest barrier of all, one that can keep us out of heaven. As we've been working our way through our current series on spiritual warfare, there's a lot of material we haven't had time to present on the air. So if you'd like Dr. Evans' complete look at this important subject, get in touch with us for details on how you can get a copy of the CD or DVD collection called Spiritual Warfare. And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, we're offering the CD version of Volume 1 as our thank you gift to those who can support our ministry with a contribution of any size. We can only make this special offer for a limited time, so don't miss your chance to hear Tony's eye-opening look at the life-and-death struggle going on behind the scenes of our world. Make your contribution today at TonyEvans.org and request your copy of Spiritual Warfare. While you're there, check out our extensive collection of audio, video, and print resources, including Tony's short book, Prayers for Victory in Spiritual Warfare, a great follow-up to our current teaching series. You can also sign up for Tony's free weekly email devotional. Again, that's at TonyEvans.org. Or let one of our staff members help you by calling us at 1-800-800-3222. Our phone center never closes, so there's no need to wait. Again, dial 1-800-800-3222. Even people who always wear their seatbelts often rush into spiritual battles without proper protection. Be sure to join Dr. Evans tomorrow as he explains how to avoid that dangerous mistake. Right now, though, he's back with this final thought for us. I don't want to conclude our program without giving our listeners a clear opportunity to become a Christian. A lot of people can listen to Christian messages, but never have a personal relationship with the Christ who is the center of that message. So let me explain it very simply. You and I are sinners. We can't save ourselves. So God came up with a plan to provide salvation for us for free. He sent Jesus Christ, his son, to die on the cross as our substitute, validating his purpose by raising him from the dead. And so all you must do is Come to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and for the gift of eternal life. And he will give it away. He will give it to you if you come to Jesus for it, believing him to forgive your sins. Do that right now. God has already made provision through the death and resurrection of Christ. You just have to accept that provision personally. When you do, you are born again. You get to start life. 
all over again. Why don't you respond right now by receiving Christ into your life? The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you.